Who is the shark? A self-destructive comedian investor worth not that much money. Steven Spinola, son of a New York State Supreme Court judge that does not find him funny, founded a website where he put his own face on pornos. He's one of the world's biggest dumb dumbs. Welcome everybody to Shark Tank with me, Steven Spinola. I'm here with my very special guest, entrepreneur, comedian, Albert Kirchner. Hey guys, Steven. Thanks for having me, man. Talk louder, Albert. Okay, I'll talk louder. Is this better? <laughs> Should I bring a little closer? How about this? Are we good? Yeah. Are you? Are, what are you going to pitch today? I have a few different ideas. You want? You want? How flushed out you want them to be? Um, you want to start less flushed out and then get into more uh, worked out stuff? Well, why don't I pitch you some ideas so okay. that you get an idea and maybe if you have something that you don't think is up to par, you don't have to say it. I love that. Heck yeah. I like to set a standard in here. Very <laughs> high. Very, very high. And I may adhere to it. I may not. Higher than Snoop Dogg. Higher than <laughs> uh, <laughs> Seth Rogen. Whoa. Okay. Even, even, hi, hi. See, I'm being very loud. We did a You're sound being very check. loud. I, I get very loud when I start podcasting. I don't realize. Hold on, let me turn me down a little. I think I did the trick. I don't know if I did. Who knows, guys? My friend Josh Gordon was just here, and he came up with some ideas that you might like. Do you fart a lot, Albert? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's most of what I do. I also fart a lot. Whoa. That's and cool. sometimes, like this weekend, I couldn't, I don't know why, I couldn't poop for like two days. That's odd. And imagine how bad those farts stink. Yeah, they're really building up in there. <laughs> sometimes you get constipated, right? Yeah, I'm a big cheese head, so that happens a bit. You need a suppository ever? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know how this one works. I should have asked Josh how the pitch for this one works. I'm not doing it justice. However, it's breath mints for your butt. Oh. So that your farts smell better. Okay, yeah. They have something called sphincterine. Really? Apparently. It no makes, way. I, mean, I, I heard that it works. I don't know. And apparently it makes your butt smell better if you have a smelly ass. <laughs> that sounds like it's a liquid, though. It sounds I think like it is. Li- no, I think it is. Yeah, so you got to do like a little enema <laughs> before I think so. you go out yeah. in the veil? No, I think that is. I think that's how it works. <laughs> well, that's great. Now, these, though, are like breath mints. So what do you think these are called? Oh, my gosh. Um, Bowel toids. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's way better than Tell me you wouldn't get that as a gag gift oh for gosh. your friends. I would buy it, and then also if I was looking for that product, I would pick that product over the Listerine one, oh, okay. liquid one. I Look, if I could just pop something in there and go live my life, that's great. But if I got to do a whole thing where I <laughs> shit all over my tub because my butt doesn't smell bad, I don't know. Some people could just live with the farts. Wait, can you can you just sorry? I'm just gonna, can you just say something? Yeah, sure. How about this? Is this okay? I don't know if I'm turning you up or if I'm turning me up. It's hard to tell. I'm turning somebody up. <laughs> Somebody's getting loud. We're turning it up in here. Let's turn it up, guys. Would you buy breath mints for your butt for three dollars? Three dollars? How many? For a pack of Altoids, like a Baltoids, a pack of Baltoids, yeah. it's a small yeah. mini, a mini pack. You don't need that many. I don't know. How no, many, I'm not going to. How many are you trying to put up there? I'm not popping them as like I'm going to pop Altoids all day. <laughs> yeah, I just put one in uh, right before a date or something. Okay, okay. A job interview. That's weird though. Like I feel like you're going to hit a similar problem with the uh, the air fresheners, you know, in bathrooms. Where like if someone walks into the bathroom after you and it really smells like pumpkin spice, it's still like oh. They pooped. They pooped real hard in here. What do you know about poopery? No. It's a it's a it's an odor killing air freshener that you spray only in the toilet bowl, just like two sprays. And it like it just I don't know how it works. It just does. But it like makes it a little more mild instead of it's like mild, it's very covering mild. it with another yeah, yeah, smell. Because yeah, yeah. you're it like yeah. you walk into a bathroom and you smell anything very, very strong, you know what just happened in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it smells like flowers. That smells like flowers are invading my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the flowers after a funeral. <laughs> That's what those are. So you're like uh, so with this Altoids, the Baltoids, yeah. You're out, say you're at a job interview. 
And then like three times during that job interview, someone's like, whoa, it really smells like mint in here. Right. <laughs> a few times. Well, yeah. They're going to they're gonna be like, that's nice. Yeah, they hear you fart, <laughs> and then they smell it, and they're like, hey, I don't know if anyone's ever told me this. You have really nice farts. <laughs> you have really clean, fresh farts. And they say, thank you. Wow, thank you. I would make a very powerful addition to this company. Has the office place just changed for you? Oh, yeah, definitely. The freedom. $3. Everything. Every aspect of my life is now free, and I've been straining myself. See what it's I'm probably saying, better Albert? for your digestive health. A lot of good ideas happen here in the Shark Tank. Oh, baby, we are. I, I haven't. Up. I haven't even told you of all the past ideas. I mean, this is the this is the, this is the show where they invented the Cockneyshi wash, a standing cock washer unit. How about dildo shoes? Shoes with dildos on the front of them, Albert. There's a lot of good stuff that has come out of this show. <laughs> dildo shoes. Dildo shoes. That's Eric Leibowitz. Guys, do you know about Legos? I love Legos. Everybody loves Legos. Absolutely. You know what people love to do with Legos? Build castles. And replicate their favorite movies and TV shows. Yeah. 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 For kids. For kids. So or that kids can. Or cool adults. Or cool adults. How about this? Lego Law and Order SVU. <laughs> there is not enough rape in Lego. There's not. Oh, no. <laughs> You know oh, what I'm gosh. saying? There's like a whole closet you built with like rape kits that are getting past their due and they're not being addressed. <laughs> <laughs> it's just people oh, on boy. hospital beds and like being put into ambulances. Seems like this. Oh. I don't know. I like it. Josh Gordon's That's got some adult good Legos. Ideas. Adult Legos. Oh, now this is an interesting idea. Well, I mean, we, how, how much would you pay for adult Legos, by the way? I pay Lego prices. Lego prices, yeah, which are pretty high. Pretty high, yeah. forty nine ninety nine for like a set. Ooh. Like, are you getting Lego to? Uh, but it's gonna have to your go with this. Or are you doing like an off brand Lego? No, it's gonna be Lego, and okay. it's gonna have it's stabler. To it's gonna or? have uh, whatever fucking whatever the guy's name is. I feel like you're going <laughs> to have to charge more because of the additional licensing fees. Huh? Because you have to get the SVU crew to sign off on this. Yeah, Mariska. That's gonna cost you more. Mariska Hargate? <laughs> yeah. You think she's not going to sign off on that? I think they are, but they're going to want a little piece of the action. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. They all get it. Yeah. Everybody gets it. But you might have to pass that uh, Everybody on gets to the consumer. Some, even if they don't want it. That's how Law & Order <laughs> SVU works, I think. I, I don't think really watch it anymore. I forgot. <sighs> so anyway, thank you, Josh, for those ideas. And Josh's last idea, very interesting idea, do you wear sunglasses ever? Yeah. How about inside to be a cool guy? I try. It's hard to see, though. Right? Well, how about this? A clip-on reading light. It's two ideas. So sunglasses, <laughs> <laughs> so sunglasses are a brilliant idea. But, and also a reading light is a brilliant idea. Clip-on yeah. reading yeah, light. Well, now great. put those two together. Sell them as one. So you have a headlight for your face. But sort of, it's like a, it's like a, just a little sun for your eyes, oh, for your eyes only. And then like, well, actually, I now need these sunglasses. I need the sunglasses because there's this light in my eye. <laughs> That's great. It's brilliant. Josh is That's a brilliant. That's like an as seen on TV thing you're gonna have to sell though. I don't know if you're getting that into the main. You know, it's a novelty. L. L. Bean. I don't know right. if they're gonna buy it. Well, it's a novelty item. I mean, do you know about the Shark Tank, the item that started this show? No. It's a diaper with a chocolate milk carton taped to the back of it in the inside. With a silly straw that like comes up and goes around like glasses on your face, and then you drink out of it, and people think you're drinking your own shards. That's great. I mean, it's great, That's but fantastic. how many? Who's gonna buy it? Who's the target audience for that? Uh, people on Halloween. No, Jokes I'm the only person who would you're buy the only them. Person? The only person. Twelve dollars. I think the fact that Spencer's gifts has survived <laughs> at all means that people really buy that. Twelve dollars? That's it? <laughs> I think it's six actually. I forget how, how cheap it was. You're it's very kidding cheap. Me. That's so cheap. It's very cheap. I can actually make you one today. <laughs> it's very cheap. <laughs> no, I'll just eat my own poop. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> now, why don't you pitch me some of your ideas and then I'll pitch you one of mine. Okay. Um, I got some great ideas. First of all, uh, this is like sciency. Uh, so I'm coming with you with my company a little bit underdeveloped, but I need some hydrating caffeine. Okay. So what's the problem with caffeine? It dries you up. Right. Coffee dries you up. Tea dries you up. Green tea, kind of hydrating. But that's all we've got so far. I want water that gets me jacked. Um, and we can call it jacked water. Jacked water. Okay, interesting. I like it. Water that gets you jacked. But it's not an energy drink. It's 
not an energy drink. It's like it's, water. it's less energy. It's it's a hydrating beverage that gives you the mild to bigger amounts of caffeine that you would get from a coffee or a tea. Does that make sense? It has to be caffeine. It can't be any of those like. For me, it has to be. I mean, caffeine is so effective. Or maybe as long as it gives you energy and actually works. What if it's one of those things like taurine that's in all the energy oh, drinks? See, I don't like any of that. Like I feel like that's, that. that's going to give me a kidney stone. How about how about natural stuff? Natural how about stuff you go like natural. yerba, like the yerba, mate whatever stuff? that stuff that's is. That's great, man. So uh, it's going to end up being like it, a tea, though. Yeah, but as long as it like yerba has a lot of caffeine in it or like energy in it. So if it gives you that amount without, what I'm eliminating here is two drinks. Because you need an ener- a drink that gives you energy, and then you need water to replenish hydration. So it's a milder... It could even be as strong as ca- coffee, but the point is that it has to also be hydrating. So I can drink this instead of drinking coffee and water. Because hmm. you know about that? If you, You're supposed to drink at least a glass of water for every glass of coffee you have. I don't drink coffee. Oh, well, hey... Superhuman. I'm glad you can live it, you know? I mean, uh, I, I do a lot of bad things. <laughs> I do a lot of bad, bad, bad things. Here's another idea I, I want. I'm sorry. I'm not investing in that idea yet. It needs more. It needs work. Oh, we need science. I like the idea. I like the it. start. I like the start of it. I think it's a legitimate problem. that hey, Look, in office culture, you got a big jug of coffee, you got a big jug of water, and you got to pound those all day. What if you just had one big jug and it did both of those things? I guess, yeah. The problem with green tea is it does hydrate you, but it doesn't give you enough caffeine for the average fiend. And you couldn't just have tea that's watered down. No, because then you're getting barely any energy. Oh. You want a lot of energy. What if you had the whole glass of tea mixed with a whole cup of water? But then you're hitting volume problems. But that's what you have to do anyway, right? Right. So I want one cup instead of two cups. I want one cup that does the job of both cups. We're cutting liquids in half, and people will pay for that. Less bathroom breaks. Businesses will save money on plumbing. Okay, what if it's inside of a syringe? Ooh. Ooh <laughs> like, I have no problems with syringes, but I feel like we're losing a lot of people. <laughs> no more bathroom breaks. No more bathroom breaks? You just shoot yourself up with energy, <laughs> and you're hydrated somehow? And Yeah, and you don't, and you don't even you need to go liquid. Bed. Look, you really have to You know, that's how they do that, honestly, though. No, like, no jokes. That is how they hydrate you in hospitals, is through an IV. And you don't really have a lot of excess liquid through that. Like, it's not going through your, your digestive system, so you don't have to pee at all. That could be great. I don't know. We'll figure something out. Yeah, I just think it's going to be hard to get people convinced uh, to take a syringe. <laughs> to, 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 to tie up in an office. Hey, you, uh, you know how you like going to Starbucks? What if you didn't have to? All you have to do is just shoot up. <laughs> you can sit in front of the Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> and you can just shoot up this thing. It's not illegal. It is healthy. No, it's good for you. Tricks the cops. Yeah. Visually, it's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Give me another idea. Give you another idea? Okay. This one is even less developed, but teleportation. I think it would be great if someone figured that out and I could sell it. Okay. Google Glass, but cool. Okay, wait. Teleportation. So Google should be working on that is what you're saying. Oh, these are separate things. Well, Google, Google should be working on teleportation. Should be. Someone should do it for us. Okay, and Tesla. I want to be the one who sells it, though. Google and Tesla should give Albert money. Okay, yeah, writing yeah, that yeah. down. And do the research and development for me. Okay, next idea. Google Glass, but cool. You know, did you see those Google Glasses? You look like a nerd. You know, it's funny. We were literally just talking about this on uh, the last episode. Really? What were your ideas for it? Well, Evan came up with the idea of peripheral blinding things. They just go like this. It's like horse blinders. They're called acquaintance, casual acquaintance blinders. So you don't have to talk to your casual acquaintances. You don't see them anymore. Cause now you're just one track. You're just moving forward. Oh, that makes ex- me so uncomfortable. You have an excuse to not talk to anybody. But it's also, you're the huge asshole for wearing those. Sure. And if you're walking around in this city, you're getting hit by something. Now, I was thinking, though, uh, uh, like an evolution of that is thinking about the VR goggles. Imagine you wear those, but it has no front. It's just a projection like in Minority Report. Oh. See, that I think is what we're looking for. Ocular implants? Well, there's a thing called the photo. It's F-O-T-O, I think. 
and and it's a headset that you that people with no hands and stuff can use to click on things using their eyes and blinking that whatever they're looking at it reads what they're looking at and then it puts a dot on it and then they can blink and click on it to yeah so you can interact with things even quicker more efficiently than with a mouse or your hand that's great i mean is that real photo but it's a it's a it's for virtual reality to use uh, like okay. as a for gaming and things like so that. So your idea would be to get um, to develop the headset so it's less of a headset, less of a headset, and it just displays a thing across your eyes that only you can see from the inside. Cool. And can't see it from that. So side. the only way you know someone is using it is when they use their eyes in a pattern that you're like, oh, he's clearly clicking on something. Yeah. He's not wearing a giant headset. Hold oh, on, guys. Right. I got a text. <laughs> I mean, it's going to start as a giant thing, obviously. Yeah. But, I mean, look how we, how small we've got that now. That used to be way bigger. Right. I'm glad you talked about this because we just, yeah, that was, that's uh, interesting. It's, it is a good idea. But also, like, right now, for what we could do, it's like, why does the Google Glass have to look like those glasses? Google's trying to, like, if you made those cool glasses, maybe people will get on board. But people will hate those right now. I think they're not doing Google Glass anymore. I thought they got rid of yeah, it. Yeah, I think it's it didn't really apply. But it, maybe that's one of the reasons, though, is that they were lame-ass glasses. Well, that's true. And okay. I have one last idea. This is the big one, though. It's a company called... Uh, well, well, working title is BotFinder. What they do is... Sorry, who's BotFinder? It's a company I'm starting. Who's... It's... This is the working title for it. What's the title? Bot Finder. Oh, it's just Bot Time. Oh, you said working title is Bot Finder. Sorry, I got confused. I thought you said Morgan something's Bot Finder. <laughs> and I was like, who? Yeah, Who's Morgan Bot Finder? Morgan Binder's Bot Finder. <laughs> okay, so Bot Finder. Yeah. Um, and it's a service okay. that you get. So for our level of technology right now, it would just be for social media. And someone would come to me and say, hey, I have these four friend requests because they're getting more and more elusive. They're not as obvious anymore, especially like spam emails. And so they send you, they forward the emails to you and they show you the accounts and then the company tells you whether or not they're bots. And right now it's a small chump change thing. But we're developing ways to get people to uh, find the difference between uh, AI and humans so that when we start getting full, uh, fully lifelike robots, uh, Westworld robots, that uh, my company will be able to determine which ones are real and which ones are humans. Well, that's my big idea, baby. Wow. It's a firm, and we're going to be really good at what we do. Wow, you like Westworld. I love Westworld. I just sad. finished uh, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep. It's the book that uh, Blade Runner is based off of. Okay. Did you ever see Blade Runner? Yeah. That's the whole plot of the He's like running around trying to figure out what's a human, what's a robot. And my, all you would have to do is just call me up and say, hey, can you guys, uh, can you guys let me know? And I'd be like, yeah, we'll take a quick look. But why oh, wouldn't you robot, just have an app? Human. An app. Why well, wouldn't you sell an app that they can have on their phone? They can just test people. Okay, for now, sure. But later, it's gonna <laughs> get. It's gonna be a more involved process. I think. The more advanced the technology gets, the more work we'll have to do to decipher which one's which. They're gonna have things inside of them, mechanics inside of them. Yeah. You can tell just by X-rays and things. I don't know. Are we gonna have phones that are gonna have X-rays? Well, we're already getting enough cancer from these things already. Yo, there should be. That would be a crazy app. X-ray That's app? illegal as yeah, fuck. Very, you, you got like a that. hacked Android. <laughs> you Dude, got your own iOS on it. You can't X-ray. <laughs> That's fucked up. Yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> I'm coming up with bad ideas. Okay. So those are your, your ideas? Yeah, those are my ideas. Interesting. Throw me some back. Bot Finder. Bot Finder's going to do well, man. That's right now, it's an app. People would love it. I'm not going to invest in it, but I do think that it would be a good app because it, it's... Uh, there are people who would want to know that stuff. I would not want you to know that stuff because I am actually a robot, and that would be bad for me. Oh, my God. I just thought you thought it was a bad idea. I'm glad that you respect the idea so much that you think it threatens your livelihood. Right. So that's the issue that's for me. That's So there's that. And throw, me, uh, throw me when you're uh, this way. Do you like to get fucked up? I love to get fucked up. Up. Everybody loves to get That's fucked a great up. Great time. You know, work is hard. You have long weeks, and sometimes it's nice to just get really <sighs> fucked up. You know, people are doing crazy things to get fucked up these days. Oh boy! Did you know that people are taking tampons? They soak them in vodka. I've heard of this. Whatever's down you know, there, I almost whichever hole the they got down there. It. You almost tried to eat one. I almost, I almost choked on it trying to eat the thing. <laughs> they know it's supposed to go up inside you. Yeah, no, it's supposed to go in. <laughs> oh, that's. <laughs> 
Don't choke on them. Well, that's another thing. People are dying, choking on these things, yeah. trying to get fucked up faster. Their friends aren't telling you to put it up their butt. And everyone's putting these things up their butts because they heard they get drunk Ooh. faster. Yeah. Now, have you heard of hooping or boofing? I no, don't know what. Hooping sorry, or boofing. I don't know if that's either. I don't know if either <laughs> are the correct term. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not uh, hip on the terminology for this. But people are putting ecstasy inside of their buttholes so that they get fucked up faster. 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 Weren't people just snorting that before to do that same thing? Now you can do it even faster and even harder. What are the are people saying it works? Apparently this works. There's people have been doing it for years. Oh my god. But I am just trying to relax, Albert. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to relax faster. Yeah? Do you think that I could relax faster if I put some weed nuggets in my butt? Whoa. Maybe, maybe like a cooked version of weed or like, you know, edibles. Butt nuggets. Yeah, little butt nugs. <laughs> Somehow figure out. <laughs> Can you call them little butt nugs? Little butt nugs. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get real relaxed real fast. Sell a new way to do weed to the kids. Kids will do anything these yeah. days. Yeah, and it seems like now they want to put stuff up their butt. Hits a whole community of people. There's a lot of people who like to put things in their butts. A lot of people who like to smoke weed. A lot of people. I'm just pointing at all the cameras. <laughs> butt guys. nuggets. Put them in your butt. And then do not try to smoke them after. Unless you no. smoke them through a vaporizer. <laughs> a that, vaporizer. A vaporizer. Oh, do we just slip into another pitch here? That's that's uh it's the same it's it's a it's a vaporizer. Oh, it's a vaporizer. It just said, butt nugs, said right? like vaporizer. Don't do that either, though. It's probably a really bad idea. Vaporizer is actually the thing from uh, from that movie Envy with Ben Stiller and Jack Black, where really? he comes up with the he comes up with the invention that cleans up poop. He sprays the poop, and where does the poop go? I have no idea. Nobody knows where it goes. There was there was an old movie about Frosty the Snowman. Where they found spray that would make snow disappear in the same way. Interesting. Yeah, it's just like aerosol spray. <laughs> so go through snow. It has to be terrible for the environment. Yeah, probably really <laughs> bad for the environment. Anyway, so those, are, those are the ideas that other people have come up with. Those are the ideas that Albert has come up with. Those are the ideas that I have come up with. For I feel now. like I'm one of the only people who have come on the show and have not suggested putting something in my butt to fix a problem. I don't, I don't know if that's... You, you, didn't, you didn't say anything about butts in any of your pitches? I don't think I did. I think I was pretty buttless. Yeah. Evan had a thing about gummy bears with big butts, big ass gummy bears. <laughs> Cuz wouldn't you want to eat a gummy uh, butt? How good is a gummy butt? That's a good idea, right? That'd be great. Yeah, I'd eat the heck out of that gummy butt. Let me let me show Not you some. Not even some gummy bears, man. You just make like a like small versions of those weird fake butts from sex stores. <laughs> just make them out of candy. How about a vacuum cleaner silencer? Wouldn't you love that? Aren't you so That'd tired of hearing vacuum cleaners? How are they still this loud? Right? Vacuums How? and printers <laughs> that, are the least... Yeah, <laughs> that's an amazing question. <laughs> How are they still this loud? You know? I have no fucking clue, man. Well, someone should, I, that's a great idea. Silence the hell out of those. Jack in the booth to stop public masturbation. It's so turn all phone booths into they have a one masturbation here. booth. New York has one. What is that? They started a project where like there's a booth you can go jerk off into. No. Yeah, I don't know if it's a joke article, but that might be a real thing in New York City right oh now. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look it up, kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stop yeah. coming all over the trees in the park, you weirdos. You'd like this idea, the alcoholer. What does that do? It's a mug that you have pre-recorded things that you or your friends yell. So that when you get really drunk and people want you to stop drinking, you click a button on the handle of your mug and it yells with you at people like it's your friend since your friends uh, aren't there. So you got a whole crew. Being like, have, I have not had enough. Yeah, that's right, motherfucker. You <laughs> suck. That, see? And the best part is you get to record those sober when you're like good at writing. <laughs> yeah. And then in your shit house, you have like a smart mug telling people off like, actually, I've had a long and hard week and maybe I could use a few extra <laughs> drinks. Kyle, get the hell, hell out of my face. <laughs> You're the first person to suggest that. <laughs> That's brilliant. That's goddamn brilliant. The alcoholer just came, went to another level right there. Also, I think I fixed my caffeine product. 
You make a caffeine suppository, and then you just drink water. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a butt thing too. <laughs> yeah, I bet you people it's really unsafe. Probably, I think putting I think putting all oh, the things yeah. in your butt is unsafe because it yeah, doesn't it's not good. It, your liver doesn't filter out whatever is bad in the thing. So that would have to be like pure, 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 pure caffeine. So it's okay to put pure, 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 pure cocaine in your butt. Yeah, but just, you know, <laughs> but know where cut source. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, that cut stuff. You don't want that in there. Oh, my gosh. Do you play Mad Libs? I have. I don't go out of my way playing Mad Libs. But what if you could make your whole family laugh just one time this Thanksgiving? I challenge you to do this That'd when you really go great. home for Thanksgiving. You know, we've had a rough year, and I think they would really enjoy that. Tell them to pick a Mad Lib. You go, go, look up on Google, look up free Mad Libs. Okay. Then I want you to tell them that we are going to play Mad Libs as a family. Except you're not. <laughs> I love tricking them. This you're going to get them in a big, they all have to be watching, they all have to be listening. Even the ones who are like not into it because there's going to be some who are like, Mad Libs? Please. More like Dad Libs. <laughs> you old ass man. <laughs> <laughs> More like bad libs because it's gonna not be good. <laughs> no, no, these are uh, rad libs. No, but trust me, this is going to be good. This is okay. a proven, proven formula that you can get on my website for three ninety nine. That's not a lot, right? What are we doing? What's this? <laughs> the, the way, the way that you do it is you just say the same word in every form of the English language. Oh, so you pick a word and then use it as an adjective and a noun and a verb. All of it. All of it. So you can pick any word? and then Any word. But any, like, it should be a bad word. Give me, like, one sentence that you did this to. Okay. Would you like to try it? I do. I want to play along. Okay. Basically, it's fantastic. It's the most... I And I shouldn't really be bringing it up again on the show, but... Because I did it last time with Evan and with Danny Hatch. And it is fantastic, but it is overdone. So this is the last time I'm going to do this. <laughs> I appreciate Pick it. Pick a bad word. Pick a bad word, but. But. I don't know. It, it should be like a curse word. Oh. Like uh, shit. Can ass. you not? Can you not say curse words with your family? Um, I don't think they care. They don't care, right? They don't curse, but they don't really care. How about shart? Do, do, is that funny to them, sharting? Oh, the shart? Yeah, they love the word shart. Okay, try using shart, but we're going to use a different word. Right, now we shouldn't. We'll just use shart. I have already used shart. What, what's, uh, pick, a, pick a theme. Would you like Flintstones? Would you like Valentine's cards? Or would you like uh, Iron Man? Iron Man. Definitely Iron Man. Okay, pick a material. Material? Um, shart. Shart, obviously. <laughs> A body part? Um, my my sharder. Your sharder? How about your <laughs> shart hole? Shart hole, sure. <laughs> okay. Have <laughs> an adjective. Um, shardy. Shardy. A verb. Uh, sharding. Sharding. A verb ending in S. Sharts. An adjective. You gotta stretch it. Can't use the same. Try not to use the same one. Which was the last one? Shardy. Shardy. Um, sh- shardington? No. <laughs> Shartful. Shartful. <laughs> Plural noun. Oh, sharts. Body part. Um. We have shart hole already, right? Yeah. What about your sharder? Your sharder. It's just a shorter thing for the same part, you know? Okay, verb. Verb, um. He is. Ooh. Come on, Albert, you got this. Well, shart itself is a verb. But we have. Oh, we gotta have a better one than that. Oh, man. We'll just do shart. Okay, okay. Person in the room. Play. Person in the room? Uh. Shorts McGee. Shorts McGee. You just have to make that up. If they say it's person in the room, you got to make that up. That's cool. a key to the it's part of the 70, 77 steps of my Mad Libs. But book. do you also like pick, like point at a family member and be like, "You're Shorts McGee." And, and, and <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be very funny, you do that. A verb ending in s. 
Um, brief shards. No. That's still a noun. Um, How about shardles? Shard- <laughs> a place. Um, Shardville. Shardville. Verb ending in S. Oh my god, these are terrible. How about um, shardings? Shardings? Okay. How about another verb ending in S? Um, Shardlings. <laughs> You're good at this. I'm very good at this. I am the master of this. That's why you can go to my website for three ninety nine and learn the seventy seven <laughs> steps of how to be a king of Mad Libs. <laughs> Adjective. Oh, uh, very shortly. Shortly. Item of clothing. Um, your shirt shirt. Your shirt what? Shirt. Shirt shirt. Yeah. You know, it's like the, the word shirt twice, but one of them is a shirt. Oh, oh, oh okay, okay. Or okay. or Schartenhosen. Schartenhosen? Yeah. Okay, I like that better. I'm sorry to be picky about. <laughs> you are. You're getting mad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna have my back turned to you. Very angry. <laughs> Verb ending in ing. Shart. Shart sting. Shart sting? Yeah. More like a shart fling. Okay, ready? Yeah. You ready to go mad? Oh, I'm so mad. I am shart man. He has lost his shart hole. Can he see or is he sharty? Can he sharting all can he sharting at all? Or if he sharts, will he fall? Is he shartful or dead? Has he the, uh, has he sharts within his sharter? We'll just shart him there. Why would we even care? He was turned to shart in the great magnetic field when he traveled time for the futures of Shart McGee. Nobody shartles him. He just stare at the world, planning his vengeance that he will soon unfurl. Now the time is here for Shart Man to spread fear. Vengeance from the Shartville. <laughs> Sharting's the people he once saved. <laughs> Nobody shartlings him. They just turn their heads. Nobody helps him. Now he has his revenge. Shartily Shartin Hosen of Lead. Fills his victims full of dread. Shart sting as fast as they can. <laughs> Shart man lives again. Now that wasn't a very good one. That did terrible justice to my book. That was that was one in a million that proved my book wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got no laughs from that. I got zero laughs out of that. For you? For me? Personally? Personally? Maybe you're jaded because you're in too deep into the shark hole. Maybe the other ones were just so good that that one Oof. just was out. Sh- okay. I feel badly. I feel bad that I made you sit through that, honestly. Well, thanks for uh, making me make it and then hating it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was really good. You um, thought it was really I, good? No, that's one of the best ones they've ever had. I've uh, listened to every single one, and the other ones were not good. No, the other one was so funny. <laughs> it was like, it was a letter home to a kid's mom from camp, and he's like telling her, all of, like, the friends he made and, like, all the sharts they make. And just, like, <laughs> they all have shart nicknames. And just, like, what was that from? That's not... What is this, a poem about Iron Man? Yeah, that, no, that was a Black Sabbath song. That's the song. Okay. Yeah. I, I thought at first because he starts with I Am Iron Man. Um, and I was like, oh, cool. But then I thought maybe they didn't have the rights, so they had to make up a poem about Iron Man. Maybe if I song. had sang it like Iron Man, then it would have been funny. Yeah. I don't know how that song goes, though. All I know is I... Am Iron Man something like a this and then a something plan? Oh, that's that song. Yeah. Okay, wait. Let's try it again, guys. <laughs> Hold on. I think we're gonna get a laugh. I don't out know of any this. of the other melodies though. Oh man, I think we're gonna get a laugh out of this. Oh, I left it already though. How do I go back? Oh no, we we screwed uh-huh. it up. Okay, wait. Let me just try it. Oh, that stinks. I'm sorry. I did that now. I wish that I knew that you knew the song. Okay, I'm just mm-hmm. going to put shart mm-hmm. everywhere. Mm-hmm. Sharting all the way from the shart bin place. Okay, maybe that's enough. Let's see. I am sharding man. Has he lost his shart? Can he see or is he shart? Can he see shart at all or shart will he fall? That doesn't make sense That to the music. 
Can he shard at all? Or if he shards, will he fall? <laughs> Is he sharding or dead? Has uh, he sharded within his shard hole? We'll just shard him there. Why should we even care? I don't think that's how Shard it hole could be shard shed or... Shard shed. <laughs> Your shard shed. Uh, I'll be right back. I gotta go hit the shard shed. <laughs> That would what if the, that's where you kept your bathroom? Out in the shed. In the shed that's a chart shed. <laughs> you tell your family they have to go in there. Oh, yeah, you can't poop inside. <laughs> I'm going to get a sign for my bathroom that says chart shed. That's so funny. Like old timey rustic look of yeah. some wood. So Would you funny. ever like. So, my hometown and a lot of small towns in America, a hobby that people have is like taking sheets of slate. And then writing like home sweet home and like oh, stuff like stuff. that. Yeah. yeah. We'll yeah. just make ones that say shark shed because no mm-hmm. one else is doing that. That's an invention shark right there. Shark shed and we draw a little cartoon house on it with poop falling out of it. You just did the first thing that I wanted to do. I was come up with a collaboration idea. Look at that. Boom. Shark shed. Shark shed placard for your bathroom door. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't love my bot finder idea. This is such a good business model for this current day and age and the place that we are in our relationship with AI. I, You know, I see it sort of. And but, you like Westworld. You know how but much... I just feel like there's easier ways than your way to find out. I, I feel agree like everyone's going to be able to do it and it's not going to be a real good business for you to monopolize. I agree yeah. that I we start the business and learning, uh, like the company part of it is the people who learn what the differences are and the science behind it. But you're right. The application should be an app. It should be super easy. You pop it open and you go, uh, you type in their uh, Facebook profile name on this app, and then it goes robot. It goes human, robot. That would be a better application, but I still think there's something there. I just think it's just going to be easier for people to do. I feel you're, like they're going to be your, able to just. Your you're grandpa gonna, is going to be like, ah, oh, man. You're going to be able to just point something at it, and it's going to be like, yeah, clearly robot. Clearly not just human. I hope so. What I if we. So. Okay. How about this? What if we get to an age where they're able to deceive us and then the police and like agencies need someone who knows for sure? Maybe then we're a contractor for the government. Then you are a really good TV show, Albert. That's Oh my god, really I good. am a really good TV show. Fuck <laughs> this whole idea. Let's get it right. <laughs> that is a great idea for a web series. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fine idea for a web series. <laughs> I'm just really excited about it. <laughs> just super excited. That's very well, funny. It's okay. also like been done in every sci-fi thing ever so far. Well, I think that shark shed placards will sell today. <laughs> I think people would buy that as a novelty for their bathrooms and dorms, in their silly houses. Yeah, people really like that kind of stuff. Shark shed. That's yeah, funny. That's really good. This is my shark shed. Look, I haven't even let you take the take the reins on it, but I want a little cut. You know, you can get a cut. 50%, 50-50. You got a slate guy. You got a guy who's got access to a bunch of. You know, slate? I mean, it doesn't have to be slate. It could just be wood. It could be fake. I don't give a shit. Shard, just needs to shade. It could be a piece of goddamn paper. That's what mine's going to be for now. <laughs> no. <laughs> you got to put a little love into it. Just pieces of paper for 15 bucks that say shark shed. <laughs> you just draw it with pen. <laughs> <laughs> just like this. Oh, ooh, we can, then we could, like, branch out. We could have shark shed, sweet shark shed. You know, like home sweet home or home sweet shark shed. Just like that, like you can hardly read it. You have to, and then, and then when you do read it, you're like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> it says what? Interesting. Shark shed. Okay. What's an issue that you're having these days? Are you having any problems in life? All sorts of problems, all the time. Um, I don't work enough. You know, I don't get enough hours. That the temping thing. Uh, are we trying to have like a problem to solve with an object or an idea? Hmm. I don't know. My life is perfect, baby. You know, I do, I'm not. Successful comedian, that hurts. It hurts right. every day. That's the thing that I would love to be able to fix via this show. I don't, I don't know <laughs> yeah, how. Let me I, I don't know what invention I'm going to come up with that fixes that for us. Do you see how funny that guy is? Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, sometimes I come up with problems. Like I come up with issues that fix a problem. That's a, or two inventions. Put them together, boom, collab, mash it up. What's your, what are some problems you got? I I just had a problem saying words. I have problems reading and saying words. Okay. You hook your phone up to your brain and then it speaks for you. We can't be that far away from that. 
<laughs> that definitely already exists and stuff, uh, stuff right? like that. Yeah. Stuff like that definitely already exists. It's just probably very expensive. So, okay, well, like VR. So VR technology has uh, existed for ages, right? Or at least, like, the attempt at it. So you just you, you don't have to be the guy to invent it. You have to be the guy who re- repackages it in a useful way that people actually like. Okay, so we buy a bunch of HTC Vibes. We take them out of the packages, put them in plastic bags. Yes, I mean. people <laughs> like plastic bags. People love that. They're they're used to that. They are comfortable with that. That doesn't scare them. They use plastic bags every oh, yeah. day. It's like one of those New York coffees. You know, you wrap it in saran wrap and put it in a little bag. Put it in a bag. It. Put it in a paper bag, maybe. You hand it to them. They take it home. They say, "What's this?" They open it up. This is not the sandwich that I ordered. Yeah, this is what? an HTC Vive. How do oh. I plug this in? Oh, I don't know, because we took it out of the packaging, which had the directions. <laughs> so good luck. <laughs> <laughs> but whoever figures it out, they deserve to be on there. That's great. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. iPhones. People love iPhones. But what's the problem with iPhones? They come with a bunch of shit in the box. All this weird packaging and stuff. Take it out. Put it in a bag. Don't you just want the iPhone? Yeah. I just want the phone. Why do I need all the paper? Why do we need all the... And they have a little cardboard nest for it with all the bunch of little warranty stuff in Chinese. Why do they read. sell the phone with the case separately? Assholes. Why? Why don't they make the phone so that it cannot break if you drop it? I think it's a class thing. I think some people are like, I'm so much better than you, I don't even break my phone. And other people are like, I'm going to break my phone, so I have to have a case. Because look how much sexier it looks without well, who without a case. Look at that. Oh, wow. Who the fuck Sweet. does that? Nobody has that. Some no. people do that. No. No case? Yeah. People don't care. What rich fucks Rich or that. dumb. <laughs> so maybe some people will never get drunk or never, never clumsy ever. Or like can't afford a case and then I'm being, like, and then I'm being mean as fuck. Yeah. But like if you can't afford a case, just drop down one iPhone level. Take the difference in a case. I sold an iPhone with a life-proof case, 50 bucks. What? iPhone 5. Oh, god damn. They had a good day. That guy did have a good day. What kind of case? Otterbox? The case was like a 100 buck case, yeah. Those like super Otterboxes are really no, 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 good. Not, not Otterboxes. I thought you said 100 bucks. It was like, yeah, it was like 100 bucks is what I said. It was a $100 case. It was the i iLife case. Hmm. Or what Life Proof. Life Proof is life called. Proof? Yeah, it's called Life Proof. Like Thick and it's like a thick case, and if you drop, it's got like all these different. It's like supposed to be like completely waterproof if you submerge it underwater. Meanwhile, at this point, that case is definitely not waterproof. <laughs> I'm promising that guy that right now. If well, the you, new phones are supposed to be waterproof. The new ones, yeah. sevens. Yeah, well, I have a six. Me too, buddy. Uh, this isn't going in the toilet anytime soon. No, I take it out and I set it down before I start doing anything else in the bathroom. I want to take care of my baby. I have a thing on top of my... This is a great invention that I didn't come up with, and I wish I did. It's it, it's a toilet paper dispenser that has an iPhone holder on top of it. With a charger. No, no charger. Let's but put a charger in there, baby. Put some put wires in the wall. In the fucking toilet. Yeah, you're spending 20 minutes there at least. Automatic toilet paper dispenser. It rolls out. It saves you toilet paper, so you're, you can't... You know what your kids... They take them out so yeah. many things at a time. I don't want to be punished just because some people are bad with it. I want to, I want to allot my own amount of toilet paper. You get two sheets per wipe. No. Four. Thank you. Four sheets Four per sheets. wipe. That's fair. <laughs> you, can't, you can't do a two-sheet wipe? Can you give me a finger myself on a toilet? <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually. That was what I was going. That was what I was trying to do with that whole pitch. It was a very long roundabout way to get you to finger yourself in my bathroom. Automatic toilet paper dispenser. This is how you come up with collab ideas, Albert. This is great. Toilet paper dispenser with iPhone charger. You're gonna. I my favorite thing about this podcast is in ten years when you're a billionaire from one like one of these ideas and you're like I told you guys I was doing it. <laughs> It's not going to work out that way. I, I know there's I a lot of poop stuff, so people don't take it seriously, but this is Nobody's real. taking any of this shit seriously no. at all, and that's the problem is I need... I, I See, here's my problem. Next idea, because that's a fucking great idea. It needs nothing else. Check. I 
I have an issue with getting my ideas to the actual real stages of things. I know that I can engineer yeah. it myself if I spend some money and I'm really bad at doing it and it would suck. And then I bring it to someone and they fix it and make it way better. What's your basic? All right, let's, what's a basic idea we can work on? Let's try and talk this out. You want to do the toilet paper dispenser? That's a good one. But here's an idea that I literally would love to make. Like if I get by a house, I'm taking one room that is my laboratory. Great. And I am building this invention. Awesome. But what well, invention? Let's pick one and talk is, about the stages of making it. It is the wake up right. It's a bed that is an alarm clock that has vibrations on it and it is a track on the wall behind it. The bed in the front, it has rubber wheels like a Razor scooter, right? So it can be on carpets, it can be on floors. <laughs> you are guilty of snoozing sometimes, Albert, are you Every not? Every single day. Today, I probably could have got there five minutes earlier if I just didn't snooze once. Well, now when you snooze, you have five minutes to get out of bed. Oh, my God. Otherwise, you are going to wake up. But that's not a snooze. Upright. Because the bed is going to slowly start going <laughs> on an incline. <laughs> oh, no. At five minutes, it will reach the point of incline where you are going to roll off the bed. It starts to vibrate again. That gives you your next warning. If you snooze again, it's going to go upright. Okay, so step one for me is, let's, do, let's start the simple side, the wheels, okay? So you want a bigger version of the Razor Scooter wheels. You want something that can hold the full weight of people being on that bed, maybe jostling around a little bit. You don't bit. think Razor Scooters are that strong? No, I don't. I oh, want, okay. If I'm going to sleep on this and I'm going to have <laughs> partners in that bed... I was standing I want... up for Razor Scooters super hard right there. <laughs> Sorry, Razor Scooter. You're just not good for us. Also, a Razor, a Razor Scooter made of Razor phones. Tell me that wouldn't go viral. <laughs> okay, anyway, somewhere. It's a good... There's like one phone that's the joint, and when you flip it, that's the scooter opening up. <laughs> be great. Great stuff. Um, okay, so you, first you get the wheels. You do the same model, right? The rubber wheels... Bearings on the inside, you just make it out of slightly stronger things and a little bit bigger. Okay, you're putting a whole bed on this. You know, I want a nice heavy bed too. Um, then the second part, you got the, the rail thing. Okay, so you need something like a little motor that can climb up a rail. Right, it's, yeah. I feel like it should be a pulley system. A pulley system. Because here's the thing that people don't know about pulleys. You, if you have a good pulley system, you set up a bunch of pulleys on both sides and you pull a string, right? Yeah. For every yeah, yeah. for every like ten feet you pull the string, you could lift a car a couple inches. I've read this. I took some basic physics in college, and pulleys are great. If you, you you boys a physics major. Really? I have a physics degree from. I took University. high school physics in college. <laughs> 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 the whole time the professor was like, "If you guys knew calculus, we could skip all of this shit." <laughs> I was huge in physics really? uh, in high school and not so good in college. But okay. in high school, we learned about the, the pulleys. And I remember when Mr. Edwards told me about the pulleys, I thought, I'm going to use that one day. Okay, so Boom. we're going to use pulleys. So that means you need, I think you need a housing to house all the pulleys to keep them protected. Well, the track's so, small so, and efficient. So it's a big, you put a big board on the wall, and behind the board is a pulley, long pulley system. Okay, so the housing box is a board and then like the pulley system. So how far out from the wall are we thinking? About a foot total? No, no, less. Way Half less. Half a foot? Less. Six inches? No, 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 no. Like, like three inches. Okay. Small pulleys. Small pulleys. Small strong pulleys. Lots of them in the, in the housing. And then as it pulls the bed up to it, it's like the wood hits the wood. So it's two pieces of wood now and the mattress. Now on the sides, you have the option to fold it closed. What like a Murphy bed. Okay. Like a piece of furniture of some Ooh. sort. So you close it up now for the day. Now you have more room on your floor. That's great. In this city, people live their whole lives in a room this big. They would love to have a Murphy bed or a, a wake-up bed. What are you calling this again? The wake-up right. Wake-up right. So it's an wake auto up right. An au the automatic Murphy bed with an alarm clock snoozer that sets. But it, there's a lot See, of liability. Technologically, it doesn't seem far out of your reach. It seems like it's there. There's a lot of danger issues. You have to sign super, super like serious waivers when you buy it because like it's like dangerous <laughs> yeah. to have like a mechanical thing going while you're sleeping. Sure, yeah, that's yeah, what. Yeah, I, yeah. But see, for your mechanics, it's like fairly basic. Like I feel like if that broke, 
then all that happens is the bed falls. Yeah, so if you're falling just, on a bed, is no problem. There's just got to be a lot of sensors for safety measures and stuff. Anyway, so that's I'm I'm gonna seriously work on that if I buy a house. I promise you that. Okay, I think it's I think it's very possible. Yeah, and you can do it. I just if a bed is throwing me out of it, I am hating it. I'm gonna hate my bed. <laughs> it won't let me snooze. Well, it doesn't throw you out of it. It slowly rises. And you notice, and you're like, oh, fuck, I better get out of this before I'm, like, falling out of the bed. So I'm, I have two emotions for this. First one, I hate a bed telling me what to do. Uh, I'm not good at getting out of bed. So, but like, that's probably tell, a good thing. You hate, set it. Yeah. Like, you can set the time that it rises. It can be longer than five minutes. But two, I like how easy it is to be standing now. I don't have to drag myself out of bed. I just put my foot down, and I'm up. See, you're you're looking at the glass half empty, and then you just said the glass half full. You yeah. just said both sides of the glass. I'm not trying to kill your idea here. I'm just trying to explore the different sides of it. You did. You just explored two sides of it. Third side of it, you sleep really hard. You don't realize it's going. You fall off of bed. You get injured. <laughs> you break your leg. <laughs> Could your happen. Bed kicked you out. Could happen. Oh, man. People who curl up tight oh, under the blanket. Up. I'm all... Yeah, you get tangled in the bed, and so you you don't have a like proper stance, and you just I break your ankle. I didn't realize I was sleeping really hard. Did not so you there would have to be settings where you set it so it doesn't go all the way upright. Well, that's why I like your snooze thing because you do get an alarm to let you know that to pull you out of the deep sleep and let you know hopefully, like you got hopefully. a five minute snooze. There's people who don't do that. Well, you're gonna have to learn how to wake up from alarms in this world. You're gonna have to sign a waiver, so I don't go to jail. <laughs> That's just gonna have to happen. So we... Pulley system's great because that means that the electronic parts of it are small and like li- like you just have a little motor somewhere, which is great because the that cuts down on the amount of things that can go wrong. Yeah, it's just it's one just motor. Yeah, and that those things... no, but if the pulley, the, that's the problem that you have to replace the whole wire in the pulley system. I mean, it's it's a very easy mechanics. So that's the thing is that I feel like I can actually create it. Because yeah. if you just had one motor that w- winds up the wire, lets it go back. Yeah, that's it. Just goes one way and then the other way. But the other, the other thing is that you're the only one who can make it go back. You have to pull it back. What do you mean? Like I, I wouldn't want it. It can automatically go back out, but you have to like set it to go back out. It doesn't do it on its own. Never yeah, you does have it like a, a reset button, but the reset button isn't. You like can't you reach have, it when it's laying down. You have to be standing on the side of it, holding the button, making sure no one's in the area so that they don't get crunched under my bed. Inter- it's an interesting concept. Anyway, let's come up with another collab idea because I love the automatic toilet dispenser, toilet paper dispenser. Toilet paper dispenser, right? So the, if just you do four, the charger... You just get four sheets. You get to set the amount of sheets. I love that. So if that's automatic, like a, like a hand dryer, that's going to be attached to the wiring in the wall, right? Hand dryers... They wire for those now, right? Well, I guess you could have them automatically put in the wall. That's true for, like, nice houses and things. But, yeah. but you can just get it like I have on Amazon, the one I got with the iPhone thing. You put it on the top. It's just, like, a standing thing. It has a thing for three. There's It fits three toilet paper rolls underneath it. Okay. And then it has one that hangs, and then on the top is the iPhone. Is it charge? Thing. I can put a charger there and... <laughs> but no. Combine saying, the two, baby. I'm saying... I want this thing to charge my phone. But I also love the idea of it setting how often... You know what I mean? You plug it in from the bottom then. So it would basically be like this. Boom. 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 By the way, this is the most fun of a podcast I think I've been on in a while. <laughs> Everyone's seeming to like it so far. Okay, so this is a toilet paper on a toilet sure. paper roll. You guys know about this. It's a smaller thing like this, maybe. This is a whole mat that it's on in a bathroom. Bathroom. Boom. So now up here, there's a iPhone bay. I can put my iPhone there. While I'm going to the bathroom, I'm sitting on the toilet here. Maybe you got your toilet beer up there. Your toilet beer? Yeah. That's a yeah. You can put anything up there. It can the be extra, shelf. It's, it's it's really a book holder. I think it's an iPhone that and makes book holder. Sense, yeah. But I Who's put drinking my, beer on the toilet. Imagine it's wired through this here. Boom! Through that pole. This thing here. This has some dial on it or something that you can set the number of how many times it turns. Maybe like a family code so your kids can't change the dial. And they can <laughs> uh, and it locks too. Yeah, you're not getting eight out of this, you little animal. So to try to to try to even get it out, you have to like manually go around, and it's like so <laughs> annoying. It's just not worth it. 
It's just, yeah, it's just not worth it. And so the power source goes to the bottom, and then it's like a cord. You plug in your bathroom. Yeah, and you somewhere. just literally just plug it in. That's easy for home stuff. Now I'm thinking big though. I want corporate environments, you know. And now, these are great for your. Now house. it's also got a charger here too. Because like you're putting it in a big public bathroom or like a work bathroom, instead of having it go down here, the whole thing stops right here. And you put it into the wall, and then there's wiring in that wall. Well, right, yeah, just wherever this happens. Even this, it just has to, yeah. You just have to have a place. Imagine you have the dial on this side for the setting, and in the wall, it's like that's where the wiring is. I mean, yeah, it's it's the wiring is going to be really easy on that. I think that's a great invention. I can't believe that doesn't exist yet. Why doesn't it? Get in, get out, get automatic to it. toilet paper dispenser. Brilliance. <sighs> What's um, another issue you've had? Well, okay, so this is an idea I had a while ago, and it might even be resolved. But there was this app. Uh, that they had where it would use the GPS on your phone and when you get out of your car and park it you push the button um, and then it saves the location of your car they fix that so on Google in. Maps it has that yeah 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 but that's uh, that's the reason I'm bringing that up is like okay so that technology is there right so why not elaborate that app why is it just a car so what I want I want an app that has a button with a car button with keys button with hell even uh, the phone wouldn't matter because it's all based on phone wallet all the stuff that you're like you don't want to lose, or even special stuff that you're like I'm gonna hide this and don't want to lose. You make up miscellaneous buttons and you do that. You okay? You do that thing, same thing though. Like tap, save location, tap, save location. For they this. have they tap, have things location. that you put on your keychain. I know those, but I don't want I want that. I don't want any extra gadgets. What I want is I want uh, buttons that have different pictures of stuff, and then I want buttons I can make easily on the app. Like uh, I'll make a camera button, right? GoPro, and I'll. I, Pick a logo and I say GoPro. And so now whenever I, I tap my GoPro button, this phone saves where my GoPro is. But see, that would be like good if you hid your items all around the city. Yeah, but... Because okay. GPS isn't that good on your phone. It's not that accurate. It really only takes you to like very close to where you are. It doesn't take you to exactly... Would it be able to tell you what room your keys are in? No, it's not that good. Like when you... Even when you look at your house where you are right now on your GPS, it might tell you that you're in the street. It might tell you when you're in the neighbor's house. It's not that good. Hold on. Let's find out. Like, when you drive around, it doesn't always have the exact location. What are you, on 94th Street? Or LaGuardia Access Road? Let me see where you have right <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to tell the viewers. Where yeah, see, this, this show, that just showed that you were on the grass next to the highway. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. This shows that we're in our neighbor's house right now. Okay, then here. It shows that we're out front of the neighbor's house. Oh, now it shows that we're out front of my house. Now it shows that we're in the backyard of the next neighbor's house. Now it shows that we're in. Uh, now I have a better idea. I have a highway. way to fix it. You okay, GPS so the GPS, sucks. the GPS sucks. Okay, well a simpler way. <laughs> then it's when you go to hit save, instead of using your GPS, it has you take a picture. So like, okay, here's a situation. I come home. Is, I'm going to cut you off. I hate this app. This no, app this is a good app. It'll actually help people. <laughs> I set down my keys, and I push the keys button on my, my locator app, and then I take a picture of the piece of furniture it's on. I live my day. Later, where are my keys? Keys. Oh, it's on that dresser. Boom. Got it. What I'm doing is I'm externalizing our memory into our phone so we don't have to remember shit anymore. We're already doing that with, like, like Wikipedia, for example. Like I don't need to know all the presidents. They I'm have not all these glasses them. now that take pictures. You know all this now? See? Snapchat glasses. Look at that. <laughs> Look, Look at, at that. that. Look uh, at that. How great sense. would that work with my idea? <laughs> uh, you're so silly. Lo losing stuff. I think you generally... That's an issue for you is losing stuff. I think it is for lots of people. I losing think that's an issue stuff. that is too easily tackled. People tackle it too often. There's too many gadgets that you can connect that via keychain and things. What if you don't need gadgets for it, though? That's the only thing I'm offering is no extra gadgets. Just an app, baby. Is your, is your camera still going? You see a red light flashing or no? No. Wait. No. no, but no. I have been playing to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that camera's still going. This camera's still going. We're going to have to wrap it up, I guess. I can't believe you hate this idea so much. I'm sorry. We, we should have ended really on the again. toilet paper dispenser because wow, that was a hot idea. And then that last idea. Well, I'll see you on the other side of being a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> that's how your thing ends sometimes people go off and they're pissed they walk out they're crying <laughs> he missed out on an opportunity of a lifetime well, that's, that's how sh shark tank ends <laughs> that's what I'm saying yeah, right, so right. good well, anyway do you have anything you want to plug um ooh one quick thing sorry uh on shark uh, shark tank there was a company who came with like jeweled headphones their whole thing was like 
headphones should be like a part of your fashion. And then these crazy I like saw that. yeah, and they didn't get it. But we live in New York City, which means you can still buy them here, and people all over the place are still going for it. Doesn't that make you feel good when you see a company get denied by sharks? People were like, "Well, fuck you! I'm still making this." I love they're, my idea. They're, they're still going. They're everywhere, man. Now that you like, go look at some pictures of them. Put it in your head, and then when you're walking around, you'll see them on the train, all over the place. That's wild. That's Isn't that stupid great? as fuck. Well, apparently they're making enough. Well, that's the thing. It's like in New York, you can make enough money off of something dumb because there's so many people who are like, "All right, I'll do it here." You just can't sell it in the Midwest because who cares? Okay, what do I have to plug? I'm sorry. I have. Uh, no, that's you're, no. You just brought up a good point. I'm sorry. I I didn't mean to make a face that made you feel like you needed to rush. <laughs> no. Um. Yeah. I I think that's really inspiring when people are like, I'm just gonna do this anyway, and if they have any amount of success, hell yeah. But I'm sure there's plenty of the people who are like, well, we're still doing this, and then they just blow their life savings and die. Yeah. On that note. I, have a, <laughs> I do a monthly show in a DIY space in bed at Tar Heel Lounge. Um, where the next show is going to be, I think, Friday the 16th or the 17th of December. We're going to have some killer-ass comics, a bunch of beer. It's a cool time. It's a party. My roommates play music. It's really good vibes. It's a really fun place to go watch or perform stand-up. Very cool. Uh, and you can check us out at TarHeelComedy.com or Very Tar Heel cool. Comedy at Facebook. Very cool. Thank you. Do you have a, a, a Twitter account? Yeah, Albert Chairman. I'm a round in closer to a thousand. Please follow me uh, and un- unfollow me later, like most of you do. <laughs> yeah, Albert Chairman. I love it. You can follow me at Mr. Underscore McStevie. Guys, this has been Shark Tank. Thank you for listening. <laughs>